I greet everybody at the lecture on biophysics concerning optical method implementation in medicine and biology. The goals uh, of today's lecture are specification of optical radiation matter effect, number two, optics methods and instrumentation basic principles of research uh, in biology and medicine. These are the goals and uh, the next, it is the list of the objectives of the lecture. These are optics parameters and basic law uh, nomenclature review, physics aspects of optical radiation matter effects, and uh, review of optics research methods and instrumentation principles. In this slide you can see the list of the points of the lecture and we start from the number one. It is introduction. It is the optics parameters and basic laws nomenclature review. Optics is physics section on optical radiation phenomenon, interference, propagation in space and matter effect. Optics is of two sub-branches in accordance with two physics models that used to describe optical radiation propagation and matter effect. Geometrical optics physics model for this is uh, the light ray or light beam. And uh, the second sub-branch of optics is uh, the wave optics. Physics model that is implemented is uh, the electromagnetic wave. Actually, we considered already this physics phenomena as electromagnetic radiation. It was at previous lecture. Let's come back a little and let me refresh your minds a little. Electromagnetic energy is emitted by elementary particles, in particular electrons, at their oscillations. One oscillation with another atom or chemical electron excites an atom. An electron in atom absorbs that energy, boosting it up to a higher uh, level shell. The boost is short-lived and the electron immediately falls back down to the lower level, emitting its extra energy in the form of electromagnetic energy. These two are reasons for the electromagnetic radiation to be generated, the oscillation of electric charges such as electron or excitation of the atoms, actually electrons into the atoms, in particular by collisions with other atoms or with uh, external free-moving electrons, for example. It was discussed already that if uh, charge is moving, this means that electric field it uh, generating is changed uh, already, and this change of electric field follows with the generation of changing magnetic field. If uh, the motion of the charge is of oscillatory nature, for example, up and down, this means that electric field vector will be oscillating as well. So it follows the sinusoidal law of its change in direction and uh, magnitude into the space. Electric 
and magnetic fields are linked in a continuous mutual transformation and present electromagnetic field phenomenon. The variation of electric field vector and magnetic field vector are sinusoidal and self-propagating into the space. Electromagnetic energy is carried by electric and magnetic fields propagating through the space. Now, it may be discussed in terms of energy conservation law. Look, actually, the electrical charge is oscillating and this is uh, the mechanical motion in its nature. So, and uh, the mechanical motion kinetic energy is converted into the form of changing electric field energy. And in turn, this changes into magnetic field energy. And by that means, electromagnetic energy is generated by oscillating electric charge. Electromagnetic waves propagate in matter with ultimate speed that is maximum in vacuum. Here you can see formula showing how electromagnetic wave uh, velocity may be calculated and how it is determined by the substance filling uh, the space where electromagnetic wave is propagating. Here you can see two more characteristics of electromagnetic wave. First of all, it should be said about the frequency of electromagnetic wave. Actually, it is the frequency of the change of electric and magnetic fields, vectors. And uh, the period of electromagnetic wave, it is the time of one completed oscillation of electric or magnetic field vector. Wavelengths, it is the distance of the propagation of electromagnetic wave within one period of time, within the time of the one completed oscillation. These are own characteristics uh, of the electromagnetic wave, but uh, mm, one more characteristic uh, should be prescribed, should be specified for electromagnetic wave. Actually, it is the electromagnetic energy that is traveling into the space. Consequently, the energetic uh, characteristic uh, should be identified for electromagnetic wave. Electromagnetic waves carry uh, energy as they travel through the space. There is uh, an energy density associated with the both the electric field and the magnetic field. The rate of energy transport per unit area is electromagnetic wave intensity described by the vector called the pointing vector. The rate of energy transport is perpendicular to both electric vector and magnetic vector and in the direction of wave propagation. The average intensity for a plane wave may be calculated by the formula that you can see at this slide. Electromagnetic waves may be classified and the characteristic to classify electromagnetic waves uh, is the frequency or the wavelength. So, today's lecture concerns 
optical radiation. Consequently, the optical radiation wavelength range should be identified. It is between 10 to the power 2 and 10 to the power 4 nanometer. You can see it is narrow enough range of electromagnetic waves. Uh, it is of only two orders of 10. Optical radiation may be subdivided into ultraviolet range from 100 to 400 nanometer, visible range from 400 up to 760 nanometer, and infrared range between 760 and uh, 10,000 nanometers. In this slide, uh, you can see the whole electromagnetic waves spectrum and uh, the narrow enough optical radiation range. Further, in lecture, we will deal with the visible optical radiation that is called light. This term we will use. After optical radiation electromagnetic nature was identified, its interaction with matter is the next to consider. It is experimental fact that in homogeneous matter, light propagates in stride and does not change the direction of propagation. So, the physics model beam or light ray is very useful when we we'll talk about the only propagation uh, of the light into homogeneous media. In geometrical optics, the analysis of the behavior of light is carried out with physics model light rays. It is just the imagination of the light uh, emphasizing the specificity of the behavior of the light when it crosses the homogeneous medium. In geometrical optics, we consider the simple case. The propagation of light uh, is um, rectilinear, straight lines. Media are homogeneous and transparent. Interfaces are not uneven. These are smooth. That gives specular regular reflections only, not diffuse reflection and no absorption of light by media. These are the conditions when it is correct to implement physics model of light as light beam or light ray. In this slide, you can see the illustrations of two geometrical optics laws. The first law is uh, about uh, straight propagation of uh, the light into homogeneous medium was announced already. And this is the number two geometrical optics law is about interaction of the interface separating two homogeneous transparent media. The first, or it will be better to say the second geometrical optics law, is the law of reflection. The angle of reflection equals the angle of incidence. 
the angles are measured relative to the perpendicular to the surface at the point where the ray strikes the surface. This angle between the perpendicular and incident light ray determines the direction of the propagation. After interaction with the surface, light electromagnetic energy returns to the first medium, but it changes its direction of propagation. And the new direction of propagation is determined by the angle one more time. It is the angle between the reflecting ray and the perpendicular that is put at the point of the incidence. How we can identify uh, the different media? It is done by the geometrical optics parameter, that is uh, the index of refraction, absolute index of refraction. What is actually happening when light crosses the surface between two different media. Light changes its velocity of propagation. Velocity means the change of the direction of the propagation and the speed of the propagation. So the index of refraction is defined as the speed of light in vacuum divided by the speed of light in the medium. The second geometrical optics law is the law of refraction. It is the Snell's law showing how directions of propagation of light crossing the surface between two different media are related with the absolute indexes uh, of the refraction of that media. You can see this analytical equation showing that the change of the direction of the propagation of light into the adjacent uh, medium is uh, in strong accordance with the indexes of refraction of the media. The particular case of refraction is uh, the total internal reflection that is illustrated in the next slide. Look at this slide. Well, light is incident upon a medium of less index of refraction. The ray is bent away from the normal to the... So the exit angle is greater than the incident angle. Such reflection is commonly called internal reflection. The exit angle will then approach 90 degrees for some critical incident angle and for incident angles greater than the critical angle there will be total internal reflection. The condition for this you can see shown by analytical formula. The fact that no intensity loss occurs in total internal reflection is also the basis for fiber optics, a new and rapidly growing branch of optics. The basic principle of fiber optics is illustrated in the slide by a long transparent rod of light pipe. Look 
at this diagram where you can see that long transparent rod. A ray of light entering the pipe is totally reflected if the angle of the incidence is large enough when the ray reaches the surface. Even if the pipe curves gradually, light will travel its entire length and arrive unattenuated after many reflections. Consequently, a single light pipe can transmit light energy quite effectively. However, the rays from different parts of an object are completely scrambled by the multiple reflections, so a single pipe can't transmit an image. Images can be transmitted using bundles of fine glass or plastic fibers, since each fiber transmits rays from a very small region of the object. At the interface between two media, light changes direction of propagation by how depends on the interface shape. We can see that the change of the direction of the propagation when light crosses the flat, smooth surfaces. And now let's consider refraction at spherical surface. It is illustrated in the next slide. Refraction at spherical surface. There is an object that is marked here in this light by symbol O, and the ray of light from the object is incident on the spherical surface of the curvature center C and the radius R capital. Since the ray is moving from a rarer medium to a denser medium, the ray O n bends toward the normal n c. An image is formed at the point 1. Here you can see that formula that relates distances, spherical surface, curvature radius to obtain the image of an object point O. And you can see how differ is the change of uh, direction of propagation of the light ray when it crosses the spherical surface. But when it will be the transparent object closed by two curved spheres, the image of the objects may be developed. It is just the lens, that is a piece of transparent material, that can focus a transmitted beam of light so that an image is formed. The lenses in man-made optical instruments are usually manufactured from glass or plastic. For our purposes, it is uh, sufficient to consider thin spherical lenses. These have two spherical surfaces or a spherical and plane surface and the thickness that is small compared to the radius of the surfaces. The lens forms a real image at an image distance. The three numbered rays in the diagram 
a drawn from the arrowhead as shown and demonstrate how image of an object is formed. But it should be mentioned and stated that there is condition to obtain the clear image of the object using particular lens. It is just the thin lens formula. You can see it relates the distances between the lens and object and uh, lens and the screen or the point where object image is observed and the focal length of the lens. You know this formula, thin lens formula, and now I try uh, to emphasize and to stress, to pay your attention, that uh, at the same time it is the condition to take the lens of particular focal length and to place objects and screen or place yourself to make clear image of an object, to see object clear. It is the condition uh, to obtain an object clean, uh, clear uh, image by a lens. The linear magnification is the ratio of the image and object heights. So, when light forms the image of the object, it changes the size of the object, converting that size of the real object into the size of the image of the object. And the magnification is determined by this formula shown in the slide. In discussing lenses, it is often more convenient to deal with reciprocal uh, to the focal length, uh, which is called the power of the lens. If the focal uh, length uh, uh, is measured in meters, then uh, the lens power measured in diopters. One diopter equals uh, one over one meter. The power of the pair of thin lenses that are close enough to one another equals to the sum of the lenses powers. Now you can see that we specified uh, the optical radiation, identify characteristics of optical radiation, and uh, now we are ready to consider physics models of optical radiation matter effect. And the first is uh, the polarization of light. And uh, Malus law, it is uh, just the quantification of that uh, physics phenomena, uh, of that matter effect of optical radiation. Natural light emitted by a bulb of intensity I0, for example, as it is shown at diagram in this slide, has electric field vector and magnetic field vector variations in all directions. It is shown by the arrows. And we say about natural light as about ordinary light light. When ordinary light is incident 
normally on one face of a thin tourmaline crystal with its faces cut parallel to its crystallography axis, the vibrations in the emergent light are confined to the plane containing the direction of propagation and the axis of the crystal. Such a beam of light is said to be plane polarized. The plane of polarization is that plane in which electric field vector and magnetic field vector variations occur. This light being passed through a polarizer has the intensity of half of initial original intensity. The intensity of light passes through the analyzer, one more polarizer, is found to be less and the intensity of that light may be calculated using that equation that is analytical formula of Malus law. So you can see this situation uh, of the interaction of electromagnetic energy with the medium, this energy crosses. It is understandable that we talk about uh, the atoms and molecules into the uh, medium with their own electric and magnetic fields. And uh, uh, it is very difficult and impossible to avoid the interaction between the electromagnetic wave and uh, the electromagnetic fields of atoms and molecules. And uh, this um, uh, effect is just the polarization when the electric field vector and magnetic field vector both start to oscillate just at the plane, crystallography plane of the medium. So, and by that means, the light from the ordinary becomes to be ordered with the only one plane of the oscillations of the electric field vector and magnetic field vector. It is polarized light. One more effect in matter should be considered as that important for application of the optics method for uh, research in biology and medicine. It is the light absorption. For dilute solution of concentration that is marked in this light by symbol C, climated incident uh, illumination, negligible scattering the intensity of light passed through a layer of substance of thickness L being absorbed by the medium is found as shown by formula. So you can see original intensity falling the layer of medium changes following this formula after light crosses the layer uh, of uh, this substance. Here in this formula the molar absorption coefficient varies with the wavelengths of radiation. It, uh, it is marked by symbol lambda here. The ratio between the absorbed light intensity and the incident light intensity defined as absorptance. The ratio between the transmitted intensity and the incident light intensity is defined as transmittance. 
and the decimal logarithm of the ratio between the incident light intensity and the past light intensity is called absorbance. The molar extinction coefficient uh, is equal to this ratio of the absorbance, concentration and the thickness or the length of the light pathway into the substance. So it is one more electromagnetic energy effect in matter. The absorption by the energy, the absorption of the energy by the substance of the medium. And uh, this Lambert Bear law quantify that effect. And now we start the third point of the lecture, physics principle of biomedical research by optical instrumentation. And the first we start from is the fiber optic imaging. Fiber optic imaging uses the fact that the light striking the end of an individual fiber will be transmitted to the other end of that fiber. Each fiber acts as a light pipe transmitting the light from that part of the image along the fiber. Even if the pipe curves gradually, light will travel its enter uh, length and arrive unattenuated after many reflections. A bundle of these fibers produces uh, the fiber optics light guide. If the arrangement of the fiber in the bundle is kept constant, then the transmitted light forms mosaic image of the light which strikes the end of the bundle. You can see this uh, at the slide bundle of the light fibers, optic fibers. The endoscope is just the physics optics technique utilizing fiber optics and endoscope you can see shown at this slide. The long flexible shaft containing the fibers is made of a helical steel band inside steel mesh to prevent the glass fiber from damage while it uh, permitting the wide range of movement required. This is closed in a plastic sheath to provide water proofing, chemical protection and ease its passage into the body. This shaft is about 10 mm in diameter and up to 2 m long depending on application. At the far or distal end uh, is the bending section which is fully controllable from the operator's end to carry out uh, maneuvers and uh, minor operations. At the distal tip, the fiber bring the light and carrying away the image are fitted with the lenses. The endoscope shaft contains the following. 
usually two non-coherent fiber optic bundles. These are the light guides. A coherent fiber optic bundle, the image guide. A water pipe to wash the distal face of the optical system. And operations channel used to insert surgical instruments. Also, control cables to operate the end which is uh, uh, adjustable. In some cases, a channel for suction and one for pumping in air or carbon dioxide gas. The viewing or proximal end of the endoscope contains the controls for all of these functions, an adjustable eyepiece and uh, a connection to the light source and camera. The light source is a high intensity xenon lamp, which a lens couples arrange arrangement to permit wide angle illumination. The camera can be attached to the eyepiece of the image guide. A photo cell monitors the brightness and informs the light source so it produces a flash for a suitable exposure. A large variety of accessories and uh, ancillary equipment is available to support uh, the numerous applications of endoscope. At the next slide, you can see uh, that accessories that may be used and uh, the kinds of the investigation that implements the endoscopy. Endoscopy, one more time, is uh, the intersection of a long thin tube directly into the body to observe and uh, internal organs or tissue in detail. Look, it is great opportunity for non-invasive direct viewing, visual observation of the internal structures to make the objective diagnose uh, of the state of that structures. Endoscopy can also be used to carry out other tasks, including imaging and uh, minor surgery. Endoscopes are uh, minimally invasive and can be inserted into the opening of the body, such as the mouth or anus. There are many different kinds of endoscopy. You can see the list of the kinds just at this slide. And uh, these kinds, some of them, at least but not at last, are illustrated by the photos and the diagrams at the slide. We can show now it is the microscopy. So you can see that endoscopy and microscopy, these two methods are based on geometrical optics principles. The reflection of light, for example, as for endoscopy. It is the example of the implementation of that uh, kind of uh, uh, interaction of electromagnetic uh, wave uh, with the matter. 
the microscopy is different. It is just to develop image of the object for more clear their observation by change of the object's size. For detailed research of the small, not seen objects. Also, the microscope is one of the oldest and most widely used physical instruments in biology and medicine. New types of microscopes uh, have been developed uh, in recent decades. This makes possible more detailed study of cellular structures and sometimes avoid the need for destructive methods in observing living cells. At this diagram you can see the bright field light microscope. The ordinary microscope found in every biological laboratory. The lenses in the condenser focus uh, the incident light on the specimen and the diaphragm regulates the intensity. At the next slide there is an optical diagram showing the principle optical scheme of the microscope and illustrates how microscope develops, forms an image of an object of study. Look here. The object under study is placed just beyond the focal point of the objective. Its image is real and inverted and uh, it is much larger than the object. The linear magnification is typically around 50. The image then serves uh, as uh, the object for the ocular, which acts as a simple magnifier and provides an enlarged virtual image at a comfortable distance for viewing. It is physiological distance 0.25 meter. A microscope magnification equals to the product of an object and ocular magnifications. Most compound microscopes can magnify by 10, 20, 40 or 100 times, though professional ones can magnify by 1000 times or more. It is understandable that the magnification is uh, just that researcher struggles for. But microscope resolution is crucial problem because as for research effectiveness the object should be recognized, should be investigated in details and any important feature of the object couldn't be lost. So resolution uh, is uh, the crucial problem of the microscopic research. The ability of a lens to produce sharp images of two closely spaced point objects is called resolution. The smaller the distance by which two objects can be separated uh, and uh, still be seen as uh, distinct, the greater the resolution. The resolving power of a lens is defined as uh, that distance. The expression for resolution power 
is obtained from the Rayleigh criterion. Diagram at uh, this slide illustrates uh, the Rayleigh criterion. According to the Rayleigh criterion, resolution is possible when the minimum angular separation that is marked by angle theta equals to 1.22 lambda over diameter of the objective lens. The resolving power can be expressed in terms of objective numerical aperture by equation shown in the slide. At this slide you can see how microscope objective and eyepiece parameters are inscribed on the outer housing. Microscope objectives, important parameters, are inscribed on the outer housing. It is the magnification and aperture. You can see how these are marked at the objective outer housing. Microscope eyepiece magnification is inscribed on the outer housing as well. You can see uh, this at the lower part underneath this slide. So then, researcher can make his her choice of the pair objective eyepiece for different objects of study. Diffraction can't be ignored since it independently limits uh, the resolution of any light microscope to about 250 nanometer. Consequently, the useful magnification of the ordinary light microscope is limited to roughly 400. Larger magnifications may make viewing more comfortable, but they reveal no additional details. Since a typical bacterial cell has a diameter of about 1000 nanometers, it is not possible to make very detailed studies of bacterial structures with light microscopes. Here you can see the example of light microscope that can be used to monitor count cells as you can see here red blood cells in particular and it is effective enough to identify very important information about these cells as their shapes The next of optics methods is polarimetry. The base of device used for polarized light investigations is the system including polarizer and analyzer with an object being studied placed between these two. When a beam uh, of a plane polarized light is passed through crystals and solutions, it is found that the plane of polarization is rotated through an angle. This phenomenon of property of rotating of plane of polarization is known as rotatory polarization or optical activity. Substances like sugar, like proteins, nucleic acids are optically active. Substances that rotate the plane of polarization to the right can be called dextrorotatory, whereas those uh, which 
rotate to the left are called level rotatory. The common sugar is uh, dexter rotatory, most naturally occurring amino acids and proteins are liver rotatory. An instrument which measures optical rotation is called polarimeter. Measurement of optical rotation enables quick uh, determination of the concentration of an optically active substance in an inactive solvent. It is very useful in the estimation of percentage of sugar in a solution. Polarimeter, specially designed for sugar test, is called saccharimeter. Molecular rotation of a substance is very important in deciding the structural formula. The optical diagram of polarimeter is shown in the next slide. The simplest form of polarimeter consists of polarizer and analyzer, a tube with transparent ends for holding an optically active liquid or solution is placed between polarizer and analyzer. The eyepiece is used to observe the light emerging from the analyzer. The analyzer and eyepiece are mounted in a tube capable of rotation by a handle. The angle of rotation of the analyzer can be read with the help of the circular scale attached to the tube. The beam of ordinary light polarized by the polarizer the optically active solution held in the tube provides the rotation of the plane of polarization of beam polarized by polarizer. The analyzer behind the solution doesn't cut out all the light when placed at 90 degrees to the polarizer. If the analyzer is rotated through an angle theta, there is no transmitted light. This indicates that the plane of polarization has been rotated through an angle theta by the inverting substance. Thus, the angle between the axis of polarizer and analyzer is the angle of rotation theta. The formula determining the angle of rotation is shown at the next slide. And from this formula, uh, the concentration of an optically active substance into the solution may be calculated. As you can see from here, uh, the formula for dilute solutions, the angle of rotation, in radians is directly proportional to the concentration and the length of the pathway of light into the optically active substance. And uh, as here is a specific rotation defined as the rotation produced by a light or a solution of length one meter and concentration one kilogram per meter cubed. This depends on the temperature and the wavelengths of light used. Polarimetry will provide information about uh, the molecular structure, the concentration of the substance, and sometimes information about the solvent that is used. Nowadays, polarimeter, modern instrument you can see here to measure the concentration of the sugar into the water solution.
and one more. Colorimetry is the optics methods we consider today, and this method involves the light absorption by matter. Colorimetry involves the measurement of the amount of light absorbed by a colored sample. In the kinetic experiments, colorimetry is used to monitor the change in concentration of a colored reactant with time. So it is very useful to research the processes in their dynamics. For a colored solution, some wavelengths are absorbed more strongly than others. This wavelength depends on absorbance enters Bear's law through the molar absorption coefficient, which is a function of wavelength. The molar absorption coefficient, alpha, is a proportionality constant between absorbance and concentration. For a given path length, a high alpha value means that a substance absorbs light strongly at a particular wavelength. A plot of alpha versus wavelengths is called the absorption spectrum of substance. This spectrum shows which wavelengths of light are absorbed and which are not. Colorimetric analysis are normally carried out at the wavelength of an absorption maximum since the molar absorption coefficient is least sensitive to changes in wavelengths near a maximum. A typical colorimetric analysis uses a series of solutions of known concentrations to produce a Bear's law calibration plot, whose slope can be used to calculate alpha. Then an unknown sample is analyzed by measuring its absorbance. The formula in this slide shows the lambert bear law that can be used to relate absorbance that is marked by D and concentrations C for a given path length B. So it is the colorimetry method by calibrating graph implementation. When you get this graph, after that measuring the absorbance of the solution with unknown concentration, you can use this graph to determine unknown concentration. So we consider the optical radiation identified this radiation and the effects of radiation in matter. And after that, you recognized the methods implemented that optics for the investigations for research in medicine and biology. And the summary of the lecture may be formulated as this. The basic principle of optical methods is the implementation of optical radiation to examine objects' conditions, namely concentrations or to obtain visual information about the structures, details of the objects. And optical instrumentations quantify optical radiation parameters that objectively specify 
object conditions. And finally, it is the bibliography. Let me pay your attention that it is not the only basic information resource, but also you can support yourself by that videos regarding total internal reflection, endoscopy, and microscopy. We finish. Thank for your attention.